Hi guys and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be ranking every major release from none other than the band Thy Art as Murder, legendary deathcore and extreme metal band with a discography spanning well over a decade at this point from Australia. They've given us such classics as Reign of Darkness, Pure Strain of Hate, Slaves Beyond Death and many others. But without wasting my time, I'm going to jump right into this ranking video and also comment down below yourselves how would you have ranked each album? But besides that, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and of course subscribe if you actually loved it. And now we're gonna jump right in with the opening debut, only known as Infinite Death. <laughs> Legendary. This album came out well, well over a decade ago, actually almost 14 years at this point, back in 2008. And not gonna lie, when I first heard this uh, EP, uh, it was the track Horde Chainsaw, and it was actually through a cat video. So if you know that cat video, bit of an old school meme of a video, and that cat, I've never seen a cat so calm and collective over something so unbelievably brutal. Brutal. But anyway, Infinite Death, of course, has the track Horde Chainsaw, such a legendary track, such a well-known track. Unfortunately, it does speak about things that are very, very not respectful to women. So fortunately, uh, the band have refused to play this track ever again. But overall, this album, it has just sort of, you know, opening EP feel for any deathcore band, which is just a shit ton of riffs, one after the other, just trying to be as heavy as possible. And yes, the writing, here and there is pretty okay, but if we're being honest as the opener, they didn't really try to aim to be sort of artistic in a way. It was more just to see how heavy and brutal they could be with the tools that they had. And as such, for me, I see this album as, I can't really say it's gonna be any higher than a D tier. It has its great moments. I think the mix, of course, can be better, but this was a great foundation of what is to come. Moving on, we have now another big one, and that is The Adversary. This is their first full-length album, and also this was the introduction to none other than our godfather, Jesus as well, uh, CJ McMahon, who showed that he is such a versatile vocalist, so heavy, so brutal, so commanding, as well as a vocalist. <laughs> and it 100% shows here with his debut. With this album, the band definitely chose to go down the more technical side, piggybacking a bit off their EP, but this one you can clearly tell, heavily more technical. Granted, it does have that nice sort of balance between technicality and just extreme, disgusting breakdowns, but definitely more on the technical side. Great moments on it, like Laceration Penetration, Soldiers of Immortality being one of the highlights definitely on the album, showing just how insane they can get. But what's really cool about this album is the fact that they were able to incorporate some level of a flow. The writing has of course improved here. There's better transitions. The buildups make more sense. Everything just flows a little bit better. Not the best, but just a little bit better. And it does show a small level of maturity from a band. It is just as good as the EP, but you can definitely tell they're uh, ironing out those rough spots in their writing and even in their production, because the production has improved a lot. A lot more clear, the guitars are a bit more out there and yeah it just sounds like an amazing uh, death metal album overall so with that i don't know you know what's i see this album it's definitely up there it's definitely up there it's definitely higher than uh, infinite death but it's definitely not in the upper tier so i'm gonna probably giving this probably like a c to a b all right now we have a big one probably the biggest one if i'm being honest and that is none other than hate hate why are you hating? It's hate, hate, legendary album in the deathcore scene. So iconic, this cover, everything about it is just so iconic. Granted the band don't like the album cover more than this, it looked kind of shit, but still, it is so iconic, it's so well known. If you've even dabbled a little bit in extreme music or deathcore, you know this album cover. It's probably like one of the albums like you have to go through. It's like a rite of passage. You have to listen to this album if you're gonna get into this music. And for great reason, because there's so much iconic music on this album, even with just the opener, Reign of Darkness. It doesn't matter how many times I've listened to it, and I've listened to it a lot, and I've seen the band live about four times now, and they've played it every time, and every time they've played it, 
it still hits just as hard and just as much as any other time. It never gets old. And it's just because of that opener. It's so ominous. It's so eerie. And then as soon as his vocals come in with, you know, fear me, I'm the destruction of innocence, those iconic lines, you know you're in for fucking hell on earth. It's so iconic. And I'll never get enough of it. It's always hit so well. But fanboying aside, what this album also had was um, huge improvement to their writing, incorporating atmosphere, a lot of eeriness and suspense in their music, doing a lot more building up instead of just hammering you with riffs uh, straight away. Open is a perfect example. But what's really cool about this album as well is that they incorporated some level of groove. Perfect example is the purest strain of hate, which when it comes to the word dance, this is probably as close as you'll get when it comes to Die Art being sort of a dancier in a way. And that when you hear pure strain of hate, you're jumping, you're dancing, you're vibing with the crowd, no matter what the scene. Again, I've seen this band four times. Everybody is jumping when that track comes on. You know, I was holding off on this band a lot during this period, but when this album showed up, I was pretty much hooked and I knew I was gonna be getting into this band for the long haul. And I think I can safely say that was for probably a lot of people. This album is so iconic and I goddamn love it. There's so many great tracks on it. All I can really say is that the drums were very overpowering on the whole album to the point where uh, guitars, bass, if they were there, um, it was very hard to hear them. The other important thing was that CJ was up front and center, and you can tell he has such a commanding voice, so dominating overall throughout this piece of work. This is like the closest you're gonna get to perfection when it comes to uh, a deathcore album. And with that, being closest to perfection, I'm definitely giving this. Like, it's, it's like an A to S. Definitely more towards the S. Like, I, you cannot go wrong with this album. It's so, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's just so unbelievably powerful. Now, with a band who just puts out probably their greatest album to date, how would they follow up? Well, they follow up with none other than Holy War. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be showing the more vulgar cover, I guess. The one with the kid with the bomb strapped to him but it is, I guess, the censored version. Now, Holy War definitely piggybacked off hate quite a bit when it comes to atmosphere, the buildups, and it did it really well. I think, of course, the title track, Holy War, still a classic. I don't remember any show where they didn't play it, and it still has great interaction. And that's one really good thing about this band as well, Die Art, is that as they've progressing on better with their sound, they've also found ways to sort of have a interactive experience with their audience. Holy War is a great example. Um, hate, of course, that reign of darkness. Here, definitely, Holy War, that takes the cake. I'll also say on this album, they incorporate a lot more of an emotional and visceral aspect to their writing as well. And a perfect example for that would me would be the track Emptiness. Now, Emptiness to me, you can see in a lot of ways, but it is so emotional when listening to it. And the more and more I listen to it, the more deeply it gets to me. Because when I first heard them play it live, uh, I think it was it was in commemoration to some kind of uh, cancer charity. And it fits so well, that thematic side to it. And then listening to it again and again, you really feel that. Especially with those ending bars where he's screaming, don't bring me back from the dead. And just the way he does it, CJ, it just hits so so close. Now I haven't experienced anyone who's died from like a cancer or any like terminal uh, diseases, thank God. And of course there's also the track uh, Vengeance at the end of the album, which definitely has more of a, um, I don't know, just like an old school slammer feel that talks about, I think, uh, murdering uh, um, pedophiles, Bruh. which I thought was great theme, uh, heavy, and definitely had that old school slammer feel. Overall, Holy War is a good album. Unfortunately, with a lot of sequels, it's really hard to, you know, outdo what you did before. Because you don't wanna end up in a situation where you're just repeating yourself because people can clearly tell that and it shows a lack of creativity and progression. And you don't wanna push your creativity too far to the point where you try and do something completely different and it, you know, you ruin it, uh, such as uh, Suicide Silence. But we'll get into that maybe in a different tier list. Write down below if you wanna see a Suicide Silence tier list. But I can still say this is a decent album. And with that, I'll be giving it a B oh, no, to an no, A. No, no. It is solid. There's, there's definitely, um, what is it, tracks on this that really stand the test of time. But as an overall experience, hate just has it on lock. However, there's a new contender. And now we're going to be talking about none other than Dear Desolation. This was what I can say 
the best way I can describe it, it was the comeback album. 100% the comeback album. Because if you remember, uh, between Holy War and this, uh, CJ left the band and uh, we thought we'd never see him again. But he came back and with coming back, saw the return of a new album. And my God, what a comeback. As a band, they're creating music that's a lot more rhythmic, a lot more, I don't wanna say mainstream, but it's definitely music that's a lot more accessible to a wider demographic of people. And all the songs are heavy. They're really creatively done. There's a lot of good writing moments like a Puppet Master where you have a breakdown with a, with a lick uh, going between each other at the end of it. Uh, you of course have insane breakdown on the title track, Dear Desolation. That just hits you like a hammer to the chest. It's great. On top of that, we also have our opening track, Slaves Beyond Death, which is really nice, fast paced, energy building song that really gets you hyped. In this album, you also get to see sort of the band's influence on their sleeve a little bit, but done really respectfully. And of course their influence has always been Behemoth. And the band have openly said they've been trying to get Nurgle on their albums uh, for years to no avail, cause uh, Nurgle be Nurgle. But you can definitely hear the influences here with CJ trying to emulate Nurgle's voice on a lot of these tracks. And even with the song Son of Misery, where they even said in an interview that they were trying to make their version of Fire in the Void, which again, absolute classic of a track. Even though they did try and make it, it still won't be as good as a fire in the void, but God damn it, it was a good attempt. The atmosphere building once again, and even the riff writing in some ways is reminiscent of those behemoth albums. But what Die Art has done here is that they've not tried to be a direct carbon copy. You can clearly tell there's the Thy Art filter going through all this. And what it creates is a very modern sounding, very powerful album that is still, I think, one of their best in the discography and definitely stands the test of time, and I think it's uh, I think it's definitely a benchmark when it comes to deathcore. With all being said, Dear Desolation, that's a that's a strong A to S as well, a strong A to S. I think Dear Desolation and Hate, I think will just go down as their best albums, no matter what. All right, finally we have none other than Human Target. This is their latest release, and the more I look at this album cover, the more I like it. I think initially when I saw it, I didn't I didn't really have anything great to say about this cover, but over time it has grown on me. Album cover aside though, let's talk about the music. The music on this was kind of disappointing. And I'll explain myself in that this felt less like a new album and more like a B-side to Dear Desolation on the basis of that all the guitar tones are the same, all the drum tones are the same, everything is the same. It's the same producer, which um, I'm not bashing Will Putney because I think Will Putney is God. He does an amazing job just mixing all these ingredients together to create an amazing album. However, just going back to the critique is that we have every bit of the recipe identical to Dear Desolation. Even the, I think it was the Kemper profiles for the guitars were also called Dear Desolation. Now I'm fine with that. It creates a bit of consistency, but the issue that arises when you look at the actual songwriting for some of these tracks and you quickly start to realize, hang on, a lot of these tracks sound almost identical to Dear Desolation. One of these examples being Death Squad Anthem, which uh, that opener just sounds like straight up Dear Desolation. Almost uncanny levels. This is like uncanny valley of deathcore. Uh, another example is Make America Hate Again, which not gonna lie, I thought that was a bit of a cringy title. I mean, it's so on the nose. You couldn't have been a bit more creative about that. But even that, that sounds so similar to Puppet Monster. It's almost as though that they just took those old, those riffs from the previous album and just sort of said, well, what if we start on this note? Or what if we just started on this note, but we played the same riff and we should be all good. That's just how it felt. Now, I did like New Gods. I liked the title track as well, but there was always just too much similarity. Like it almost just felt like they were running out of ideas almost, or that they just had excessive riffs from Dear Desolation that they didn't know what to do with. So they just made a new album, maybe they had a contract, who knows? So overall as an album, it's just fine. It doesn't show any progression for the band. It just shows a bit of stagnation in my opinion, which is kind of disappointing. Like I assume that they might've wanted to change things up a bit, but they didn't really, I don't know, maybe they're just plateauing at the moment. You know, it's been a good few years since this album dropped. So maybe they've been waiting. They've been uh, trying to gather something new. Maybe there's something fresh in the works, but until then human target for me, unfortunately has to go down to the B tier just because, you know, it wasn't really overall that exciting. So B tier. 
There we go. But anyway, that is my tier list for Thy Art is Murder. Write down below what did you think of my picks, and of course, write what your picks would have been. And also write down below if there's any other sort of tier list videos you'd want me to, you know, try and look into. I find these fun, it's nice to sort of do a comparison piece, and uh, yeah, I definitely want to do more in the future. But besides that, uh, this is quite a long video, so if you've been here this far, thank you very much. And with all that being said, uh, thank you for watching. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!